Clash Productions presents The Silmarillion in 3 Minutes, a condensed version of J.R.R. Tolkien's entire history of Middle-earth. Once upon a time, Eru slash Iluvatar slash the One created 15 beings he called Valar. They were called Vere, Mandos, Niena, Ermo, Este, Olmo, Melkor, Morgoth, the First Dark Lord, Manwe, Varda, Eule, Ivana, Vana, Orome, Nessa, and Tolkes. So when Iluvatar creates the Valar, he shares with them his big plan for the world. One of the big things he tells them about is the children of Iluvatar, i.e. elves and humans. And most of the Valar are all like, sweet, sounds cool. But eventually, Eule gets all like, Seriously, how long is this going to take? And so he decides to make his own creatures because super powerful Valar can do that kind of thing. So he makes dwarves. Yep, you heard right. Dwarves are an unsightly blip in Iluvatar's plan for the universe. Iluvatar doesn't like that Ayule made dwarves, but he's like, don't smite them. Beards are cool. But eventually, boom, the elves, the first children of Iluvatar, are created in Middle-earth. So the Valar send Ulmo, Lord of Waters, and he's like, yo, elves, come on down to Valinor where we live. It's way cooler than Middle-earth. So the elves think it over and some of them go and some of them don't. Anyway, an elf is born of the ones who come to Valinor, and he's called Feanor. Feanor is really awesome at pretty much everything, except maybe a little humility, and he makes these really cool jewels called, wait for it, the Silmarils. See, that's why the title of the book is The Silmarillion, because it's all about these jewels. Why are they so cool? Well, see, one of the Valar makes these two trees that are really pretty, and everybody's like, that's so awesome, because Valar and elves have weird tastes. And Feanor sees the trees, and he puts the light from the trees inside the jewels. If this sounds strange, it is. Anyway, pretty much the only guy who doesn't like these trees is Melkor the Spoil Sport, and he brings a giant spider and she destroys the trees. Then Melkor also steals the Silmarils and takes them to Middle-earth. Then comes the Oath of Feanor, which a bunch of elves swear, saying they're going to get those jewels back or die trying, and they do. Die trying, that is. These nasty elves kill pretty much anyone who tries to stop them getting those jewels, which is basically what the whole book is about. Oh, and at some point the second children of Lutar show up and they're called men. So anyway, the Valar send a bunch of heavily armed help and there's a big battle and Melkor gets his legs chopped off. Now the men who decided to help out the Valar are given the reward of super long life and get their own special place called Numenor. Numenor rocks and they like it a lot, but after a while they get mad because the Valar say only people who are immortal can go to Valinor, the undying lands. Which kind of makes sense. Meanwhile, in Middle-earth, Melkor's right-hand man is planning on destroying some of the Numenorian stuff. What is this guy's name? Sauron. So the Numenorean king tells Sauron he has to stay on Numenor as a prisoner, but while he's there he convinces them to be so evil that Iluvatar blows up the island. Thankfully all the Numenoreans who decided to be good guys made it to Middle-earth. So they do lots of different things until Sauron comes back. You see, even though destroying Numenor destroyed Sauron's body, Sauron is a mayor, which is like one spot down from a Valar, and can't really be killed. So he comes back and everybody in Middle-earth has to go and destroy him again. That's all well and good as far as it goes, but hundreds of years later he starts to come back once more. So the Valar sends him help, the Astari. Their names were Aloran, Karomo, Ewindel, Alartar, and Palando. Though you probably know these two chaps as Gandalf and Saruman, these guys were mayor just like Sauron. So you'd think he would give up now, but things didn't quite work out that way. Most of the stuff after this is told in The Lord of the Rings, but you can find it in The Silmarillion too. Anyway, if you haven't already, go read the thing. There are all kinds of cool things I didn't tell you, like Elrond being only a half-elf, the fall of Gondolin, Fingolfin's single combat with Morgoth, not to mention the forging of the Rings of Power. Oh, and if you're one of those people who actually know how to pronounce the names, don't mention it in the comments.